Hey everybody, you're listening to the Songwriters Across Texas podcast where we get to know musicians through their stories and hear some of their music. I'm your host, Carl Anderson, and today we're at Arlen Studios in Austin, Texas, and my guest is Ellis Bullard. Honky Tonk Old School Country is a dying art. The country outlaws that made it famous, Merle Haggard, Waylon Jennings, Jerry Reed, have left us. But today, Ellis Bullard is one of the Texan musicians keeping it alive with his own twist. Coming from a line of musicians, Ellis knows that a good show is about more than the music. His stage presentation is second to none. He and his western, vintage-clad band work the crowd with ease. He tells them, we're up here bringing you piss-hot freight line and country music. And the only way to know what that means is to see it. I'm lucky enough to have checked it out last week at the White Horse here in Austin. There was a bunch of people dancing, and it was awesome. I'm glad I did. You should check it out. We get to see him now. Welcome to the show, Ellis. Darling, what's man to do? My world's upside down and blue. Yeah, the highway on my name ain't no pleasant kind of thing. Darling, what's a man to do? The highway took her from me. These new towns all feel the same. We're still out there chasing me on. Still burning up to look for fame. Never left her lonely Would a lot be on at home Yeah, the highway took her from me Hardest truth I've ever known something new for you fantastic man wonderful gosh you're that's a new song brand new brand man new. straight out the oven you wrote, yeah. you wrote one for us oh it ain't that good <laughs> <laughs> well it wasn't exactly but no that's cool man appreciate you trying that out here for the first time it's gorgeous yeah man i feel like i've heard that song before I, and that's a quite a uh a gift when you write a song and and some you hear it for some, the listener hears it for the first time and they're like Oh man, it's like I feel like I've been listening to this song the whole time. Certainly. Well, you know, I'm influenced by a lot of the earlier guys, so you know, uh, that's definitely where a lot of my inspiration draws from. So uh, if we're sounding like those folks, then we're doing our job. I agree, and it's important that I mean, I don't think any artist really, you know, you're not going to create something that you're inspired by something, and so you say, I want to emulate that. Like me, I'm an actor, right? And so when right. I was like. I want to be like, you know, like Jack Nicholson. I want to have these qualities. I right. like Mickey Rourke. I like, you know, Al Pacino. They have a quality I want to meet. I don't want to be them. I want to meet their quality. Right, yeah. Like, we're not trying to, like, reinvent the wheel. You know, we're just right. trying to be a tire company. That's right. You know? And move some tires. And they're good tires, by the way. They're, they're healthy ones. You're going to enjoy the ride. Yeah, we're hoping we get some miles out of these tires. 
you guys are a lot of fun. But I want to get I want to get to your uh, <laughs> early years. I want to you know talk about how you grew up, how you fought. You a very musical family. Uh, I, I'd, I'd like for the people to hear about that. Yeah, uh, my dad, you know, played in bands in college and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I also played in a band uh, back home in Bay City. It's like the Western Express. It was a bunch of, you know, it was old old uh, plant uh, workers, a bunch of fellas got together and, you know, played uh, a lot of like the dance halls and VFWs and stuff around town and uh, around uh, the state and stuff. So we'd always go check them out. And there'd be a lot of folks out. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, they're a good band, so, you know, they'd go play a lot of different places. But uh, um, my mom, you know, she uh, grew up in uh, Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and played in that scene. And, wow. Uh, toured and sang and, uh, you know, had just, you know, knows a bunch of people from that scene back there. And, and uh, That scene isn't, I mean, that's so historic. Oh, definitely. You know, there's a lot, a lot of killers that came out of there yeah. and still a lot of great music that comes out of there. I'd love to go make a record or go record a song I see or you someday. doing that absolutely it's a good idea so you had the family and your grandmother too right yeah 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 but I think mainly just my uh my my mom and my dad like I don't think anybody else got bit by the bug well except for my grandfather uh Raymond on my mom's side he was a picker as well uh but my dad uh he's you know army brat my uh his dad was a uh, was a colonel in the army and uh uh his brother also served and uh you know, he was the surfer uh, yeah. <laughs> guy, you know, played <laughs> awesome. the guitars and Charlie stuff. Charlie don't surf. Yeah, 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 <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, um, yeah, you know, just a perfect storm for something like me to come along. You know? Right. Um, so what? how old were you when you started to uh, pick up a guitar and, and say this is what I want to maybe start writing? Um, well, my older brother, like, uh, played in, like, a, a metal group in high school, and, uh... Was it good? <laughs> well, for high school, right? <laughs> it was pretty good, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, but, you know, it kept me interested in music, not necessarily, like, just country music, but, like, I wanted to, like, it made me want to, like, play, you know? And like I said, like, I had, you know, there's always, like, that kind of, like, sibling, or sibling rivalry, so, like, once I started, like, picking up the guitar, I was like, all right, now I want to be better than you dudes. How much older? Uh, well, we're all really close in age, so... I had the same thing, man. I got three yeah. brothers. We were, like, four years apart. Or yeah, something. I was the youngest, but like we were all... I think uh, we're all 16 months apart. Yeah. Yeah. So, your, like... Your parents had a rhythm going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, uh, they got it all done pretty early, so... Um, yeah, so, like, you know, I... I would always want to go, like, it was always, I was the younger guy wanting to go pick up a guitar and go play with the older kids, and they're right. like, nah, I gotta go sit down, you know, so... Right. Um... Eventually, you know, I just started getting better and better. And, uh, you know, as you get older, your taste in food changes, my taste in music. Uh, you know, I was raised on country music and really enjoyed it, but I hadn't really lived any of that stuff. So, like, at a certain age, I was like, you know, whatever. But uh, once I started kind of going through some shit, you know, like, you know, dealing with, you know, breakups or, in, uh, you know, just bullshit, mm -hmm. you're like, damn, these guys are spitting. Mm -hmm. Life, know? life exactly yeah now you, you got the song right so uh you know just kind of full circle back to uh what i was kind of raised on and kind of just been my inspiration uh for writing you know right um you got you you told me earlier that uh you went to texas state university and yeah. uh that was uh, uh where you in, in your sophomore and junior year you started getting a little better or deeper well like uh, i was taking yeah like stepping out and playing in front of people and then you know putting together a band and booking shows and like mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. once i was doing that you know I, by like my senior year i was opening for like wade bowen and cody johnson and you wow. know opened up for whiskey myers on their mud tour wow. and um you know i'd been bit by the bug at that point you know i was trying to figure out how the hell i could get out of college and like, you know, with a degree, obviously, so I didn't piss off my parents too right. bad, but, um, you know, knew exactly what I wanted to do and how I was going to, not how I was going to do it, but like how I could do it, mm -hmm. and, you know, yep. making the connections I was making and, um, you know, just seeing the blueprint, getting out there and playing the shows and like, you know, eating the shit sandwich, but not developing a taste for it and like, <laughs> you know, because I've got a long list of things that I don't ever want to do again so i didn't know if i could do that but 
uh, you know, but I wouldn't have the experiences I have or some of the songs that I have if I wouldn't have done those things, you know? So, like, there's, you know, so much, you know, that you learn when you dive headfirst into this. You know, this is all I do is play music, you know, and, and to keep the lights on, you know? And so you've got to do yeah. a lot of stuff. and um, you got to keep it moving. And, exactly. you're all, and you're learning the whole time. It's, Carrying it's, the water and chopping the wood. That's, so. that's my saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh I'd say that to everybody. What do you do on your way to enlightenment? Carry yeah. the water and chop the wood. What do that's you do? You can what do you be, do you know? when you get to enlightenment? Carry the water, chop the wood. That's the gig. Right. I love that you just said that. Um, so you start putting it together. Uh, Put the band together and. Uh, you know, I was starting to get better opportunities. And as I got more opportunities, you know, I started uh, networking and making friends and better bands and being around those people made me better. And uh, eventually led up to, you know, me being in a studio with Wyatt and Adam. Wyatt uh, is? Wyatt Langford's my drummer and producer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Adam Duran's my, my lead guitar player and producer. Um, you when know, did you fall in with those guys? That all came about during the pandemic. You know, it was the perfect storm where everybody was kind of put on hold and it kind of leveled the playing field except for, like, the acts that were too big couldn't work, period. Right. And, uh, you know, people like me could, you know. So we found a niche and, like, figured out where we could get work and we'd go play those gigs. and like. Where even, were the gigs? Man. <laughs> no, I, you told me earlier, but I, I think I... Yeah, like the restaurants and steakhouses yeah. and stuff like that, you know. Um it's still a place to go and chop wood. Right, exactly. And so we knew we had to do that, you know, like it just isn't something that just happens overnight. And even if it is a good band, you know, like you need to go out there and get your reps in on stage and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, we uh, we did that, you know, for, for a good year and a half, you know. And uh, then, you know, once we got this, you know, record recorded, we knew that, you know, this was something special and we wanted to try and do something different than what we were doing. So we started uh, trying to push more towards like the listening rooms and going to play like, you know, music destinations instead of just, you know, yeah. work, you know. So, yeah. Um, you know, this year has been great for us. You know, we've been able to uh, to work into some of these Austin institutions like Sagebrush and the White Horse and um, the Saxon Pub and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, hell, even Pooties out in Spicewood. All those know, are. We held down a, a good All those are super important. Nice. And, um, you know, it's. Uh, it feels good to to be able to to go and, and play and hold court, you know, on those stages, and um, you know, it's a, a great uh, great start for us. You know, we're just we're excited and happy for the work, man. You have such you have such a great vision for yourself. You guys on stage are are really great to like the decked out. I, I'm showbiz. A, I'm a, son. yeah, no, I'm a big <laughs> fan of that, and there's not a ton of that necessarily here so when i saw you and i was like oh man yeah and the, and the whole band right. everybody's decked out and you guys can play your ass off and i, I want to say i was looking around and i was going man that got to be 150 in here easy and this <laughs> happening uh every week and people are dancing fools there you're it's great i, I hope that everybody gets a chance to see you doing your thing. It's very, and you're very just fo really focused on this, bringing this genre back to life with some freshness. Certainly, man. We're just trying to have fun with it, you know, and like uh, with like our stage and stuff like that, our stage presence, you know, like, um, you know, we're dressing like our idols, like the folks that inspired us the most, you know, and like, you know, uh, we used to dress like the roadies, you know what I mean? And we got paid like it. <laughs> and yeah. so, uh, you know, the second that we started putting on these duds, dude, and started dripping on, on at these shows, like, we were making more at the tip jar than we were at, like, what people were guaranteeing us. And eventually, you know, it helped us, you know, get looks, you know? And, like, you know, it's it's a part of the show, you know? It's, uh, it, it's uh, you know, it's just a lot of fun, man. Yeah. It is a lot of fun. It's going. Let's just go into another song. I'm, I'm ready cool. for. I'm ready for song two. Let's try it out. Two, three, Headed out west Just carrying home Check this monkey 
doggy off my back He's still holding on I'm helping him broke down Lost, looking for a dream We're off chasing some numbers They don't mean a damn thing Awesome. Thank you. What do you call that? Yeah, man, that's uh, Chasing Numbers that was uh, featured on that record there. I can't wait to hear it. Is the record out? Yeah, it's out. It's available. It's uh, in every uh, digital space you can get it, man. Let's t- wait. I want to I want to talk about how the record came about. You you recorded it quick and uh but the title itself and all that like that's it's just it's good fun. But it's I want to hear. Fun, I want to hear you talk about it and explain it to the folks. You just said it, man. It's as simple as it can be. It's fun, dude. Yeah, like we're know. having fun with this, and like uh, you piss, know, I was told by hot, people. Freight lane and uh, freight, piss hot freight line and country. country music. Yeah, man. Um, you know the it's guitar like tons of really hot guitar licks. A lot of the melodies and stuff are driven with guitar licks, which is something I love. Mm. You know, like. Uh, like a guitar riff, melody driven music, you know, is, is great. And like, think about folks like, you know, Dell Watson and stuff like that, you know, like truck driving tunes. Yeah. And that was a big, big inspiration for not only some of the songs, but uh, some of the, uh, uh, you know, just the, the vibe of like the album and such itself, you know. Um, I feel like you and Dale are fishing out of the same pond. Yeah, yeah definitely, man. I, I love Dale, dude. He's incredible. It, I, and, I'm glad uh, he, I, me too, but it, it says he been helpful to you and like, have you had interactions with him or is there anybody like that that you have i've seen him you know and like we've you know said hello to each other and stuff like that dale Mark. watson that's sorry i got I forget that we're, we get on first name basis and people are listening <laughs> and they're like who's dale yeah you know i mean i'm not like best friends with them you know i'd love to be good friends with them i'd you know shit i'd be tickled green to go sit down and ride with them right uh we're, we're playing his club actually uh hernando's uh coming up in july so we're looking forward to that really good good uh but um yeah, you know, like I said, man, we're just trying to have the most fun with this. Like, we were talking to some uh, PR agents and to some, uh, like, uh, promoters and stuff, and they are like, we find this title problematic. Sure, and, of course. You know, fine. <laughs> but <laughs> it's fun, you know. And uh, Sorry, you, you know, don't like it. Right, well, it's like, you know, this is our splash in the pond right now, and, um, you know, it, it'll garner some attention, and I think that the music backs up the title, and, um you know it's our first project and um it's supposed to grab eyes and turn heads and you know get people interested in it and um you know i think there's a song in there for for everybody uh that that likes country music or even you know a lot of our people that come and buy tickets to our shows aren't fans of country music typically i was gonna say uh, because that's not my first reach i grew up uh it was just a rock and roll kid in the east coast you know right a lot of them you know heard of us on a podcast or um you know uh saw a video or something like that or just happened to be there 
you know and after the show they're like i don't even like country music but i love what y'all are doing and i think it know? but i th but i don't think it's like it, it it's beyond the genre because it does have a edge that's that dale has and, and that all of those guys that you like have but that rockers also have certainly you know like uh you know, stage presence and like, uh, you know, I'd say Mike and the Moon Pies puts on a clinic every time uh, they're on stage. You know, there's Omar, their bass player is full of energy. Uh, Mike's lyrics, uh, their guitar playing, Catlin, uh, you know, him and, and Zach Moulton are, are incredible, you know. And uh, yeah, man, you know, like those dudes get up there and give people and biz. So, uh, yeah. you know, I've just been taking notes from a lot of people like that along the way. And, um, you know, it's our turn to get up there and, and give people a show. So we try and do that every time. Well, success. I mean, you are succeeding from what I saw. And how often are you playing? Uh, so that White Horse is every other Wednesday night. Okay. And uh, we just extended that through the summer. Great. Uh, on into you guys August. need to see that if you can. And, uh, you know, some nights, uh, some weeks, it seems like we're playing like three and four nights a week. And, and, uh, some, some nights it's just the weekends, you know, we're weekend warriors and, uh, it's kind of hard, you know, there's a few clubs here that, that really take care of musicians and stuff like that. And other than that, man, it's, it's really tough to, to kind of pay a band around here. So we get in the van and we go play wherever we need to, to, to go make it happen. Good. You know? uh, how, how far over reach you have right now? Do you have like a, like a up to Dallas, out to, you know, whatever, a loop or something, like clubs that around outside of Austin. Yeah, definitely. You know, we tour regionally here in Texas. We've got a lot of spots that love us down in Houston. We did really well working the Dallas and the uh, area and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, East Texas and uh, in West Texas. We just did a big uh, show with Paul Cawthon out in Midland at a, a grand opening of a bar out there. And Great. that was fun. And, and you know, we, we made a lot of fans out that way. And, you know, like I said, you know, we're we're a year old and I'm our booking agent and like mm. I'm our manager and, uh, you know, I've developed a long list of things I don't want to do. And so uh, we're trying to book our calendar out with like, you know, where I see some of our musical peers at. And um, it's a little tougher to do that yourself, you know, but I, if, if yeah. you, uh, you know, you shoot enough shots eventually, you know, you get into into a few places. So we've done good to keep a full calendar plan, you know. It's hard to, to book your own and then go do it, you know? That's, it, that's... It's tough, man, but, you know, you can do it. It's sure. just, it's a lot of work, man, but... Yeah, and uh, you're not the only one that's done it. It's a lot of being told it, no, is... you know? You got to get yeah. used to that, and, you know, just, you know, you get told no six times, and the seventh time, they're like, all right, man, you know? Yeah, and then you show up, and you do your thing, and they're like, exactly. come back! Right, man, exactly. You make sure that you've done the uh, the diligence on the back end. So whenever you get the the opportunity, you show up and you do work. And uh, you know they're like, "Damn, yeah, let's you know do it again sometime." And the more you do it, the better. And the more just you're you're sure of yourself of what you're doing. Your, Certainly, your confidence comes in. It's uh, I've like music is probably you know music and baseball maybe are like the two things from the time i was like my first memories that i was like this is what makes me go these yeah. things you know and it, music's always been that and the joy of discovering uh new artists that are doing it with the old integrity that are in the old standards you got to keep it up to a standard and you have all of that it's really nice to see right well you know my bandmates they're the best guys i've played with in a long time and uh you know they hold themselves to a standard and it's like i said you know iron sharpens iron and yes i've always tried to be the worst musician in my band and if i'm yes. that then you know i know that i'm surrounded by killers yes and uh eventually you know i'll i'll get up there you know but um you know the band you know adam wyatt sam cole all these guys are you know monsters at their craft and really passionate about what they do so um whenever you know it comes time you know for me i gotta make sure that you know i'm i'm you know up to par with that with that standard you know what i mean yeah. so those guys kind of set the uh set the bar you know it's that's smart man you, that's right you keep your band better so that you're <laughs> okay you know but you're the front so it's just... right well you know like i write good music and like uh you know i know my way around a country song and stuff like that and i'm you know been pretty successful about keeping a full calendar but like uh you know those guys are stewards of like you know going to like you know mike hosty uh taught uh wyatt at it uh, at a, his music school and why it has like a degree for audio engineering so he understands uh -huh. 
music on an entirely different level than I, you know, until I <laughs> have my degree, you know, I, you know, he knows m more about that stuff. And then like, you may ever know. Correct. You but know? that's and not a bad thing. It's not, I don't have to worry about that. Because that's I it. can focus on what I know. You know, I, 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 as many hats as I do wear, I find solace in knowing that, like, I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. These guys got it. Yes. You know, they can handle that. It's like a big weight off your shoulders. I'm not a big guy on trying to claim that I know everything about everything. If I know somebody that's a master at that shit, then I'm going to get them to do it, you know? And um, that's kind of been, like, the uh, the method to the madness, man, just trying to, uh, to build the strongest team I can. Well, I just... I'm so impressed, and I and I, I hope this. I I we I was when I was watching you the other night. I I met these two British guys. Yeah, those guys are cool. Yeah, they they were like, oh, he was real nice to me, and we were like, yeah, he's a cool dude, right? And uh, you start playing, and man, you know, it's 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 everything is advertised. I mean, that's I guess that's the best way I could put it. Uh, you've got some good press recently, and it's every nice word they say about you is true. These guys were. They go, hey. Do you think do you think this band is gonna be big? <laughs> Which is you know typical sort of fan thing to say. And I was like, well, I'm here to put them on a show, <laughs> and I'm hoping that everybody I put on the show is really worthy of this kind of attention. So yeah, I I think he's got a damn good shot at it. That's for sure. Right. Yeah, man. I mean, those are that's wonderful accolades, man. That's more wood for the fire. You know, it's uh, you know, something that'll help you keep in it. You know, um, I will. We uh. I will. You know, we get out there and we, we go and we play a lot of these stages and, you know, the idea is really we just want to get this music out to as many people as possible. Like, uh, you know, anything like byproduct, like, you know, I mean, look at the current stream situation. Obviously, we're not in this shit for the money. You know what I mean? Yes. So, like, uh, getting out there and, like, really impacting people and people leaving your show and being like, damn, like, I felt something. You know, like, it was an experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. So, like trying to bring that to it you know and like if uh because that's the only that, thing you can take with you exactly well people can go you're you know they're buying more than just a ticket they didn't just buy a piece of paper to go out and be like you know go hear our songs you know those people are going to leave you know knowing every single person on that stage intimately you know so it's a uh it's a little something different we're trying to do you know it's awesome you got another song for us yeah <laughs> Line me up another cigarette And I'll go place one last bet On that same dead horse That you've been baiting on Here's to you, here's to me And our newfound misery This damn roller coaster that I'm on This ride goes round and round What goes up must come down Lord, I'm going down Fate, something's there We can hold on to We can hold on to oh, oh. It's not such a pretty place But let me hop in man. But these days there ain't a skeeter Who can buy me I'm so low But now it's pulling down the city sun Stuck on this coast that I'm on This ride goes round and round What goes up must come down Lord, I'm going down Hold our hands in the air And if I eat something's there This ride goes round and round. What 
what comes up must come down Know where I'm going now Hold our hands in the air Yeah, faith's up in the air We can hold on to We can hold on to That's Thank you so much for being here. This is Ellis Bullard, everybody. If you want to see more of this interview, if you watched it on the CW and you want to see more of it, it's on our YouTube channel, Songwriters Across Texas. And go out and watch this guy at the White Horse if you live in Austin. You will not be sorry. Ellis, man, what a pleasure. Nice to you. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. Certainly. Appreciate it.